Hello and welcome to the video for how do I level streaming using streaming volumes. Let's go ahead and quickly run through our example here. You'll notice I have four rooms, each one a different color. You'll also notice everything looks like it's simply one map connected together without any issues. Now we'll go ahead and explain streaming volumes in a short manner and then we will cover how to use them. Streaming volumes is a way to simply have one persistent level, which is basically a map that will hold a bunch of other maps. And that's it. You have the ability to load and unload any of the individual maps inside the persistent level. As you can see here, I shut off each of the individual rooms, which I have actually classified as a map. And it allows you to easily manage a large amount of data and level information. So streaming volumes. Streaming volumes are a volume that determines when the player is inside the streaming volume what maps they can see, what parts of the level they can see. So basically I've designed this, if I load up each of my maps, where you can see four maps. Each map is a separate room in my game. Using streaming volumes, I've determined that if I'm in this first set of three rooms, I should see the first set of three rooms because there's a doorway connecting all three and you can see from the first to the last, like so. Now, I have a second streaming volume over here, which only encompasses the last two rooms. Once you get into here, What's going to happen is all four rooms will be loaded because you can see all four. You're overlapping both streaming volumes, therefore both streaming volumes are active, and I've told both streaming volumes to load all them up. However, once you leave this streaming volume, which I've identified as covering the first three rooms, once you leave it, it is going to tell itself to unload the associated maps, which is one, two, and three, so that way, once you get into here, one, two, and three unload. However, since you're in this streaming volume, this one tells three and four to stay loaded. Therefore, you're going to see that. So it's a little difficult just simply explaining it. So I'm going to walk through it and we will go through exactly how it's set up. So to access your levels, you would go to Windows, Levels. You'll have access to your persistent level and any maps that you have included. You can ignore the bottom four. These are for using blueprint nodes, which is covered in a different video. So the first four maps here. I have them set up down here as map one, map two, map three, and map four. I also have persistent map, which is again, the container that holds everything. Persistent map consists of only the things you want to keep persistent, such as my player start, because I have one player start, my streaming volumes because the streaming volumes determine what you can see and then things such as my light source and my sky sphere and other optional things like that. You may, for example, want to put things that should be persistent across your game like a user interface manager or a game manager or game state or something like that. So let's go ahead and go back to here. In our levels outliner, we have the levels drop down and then we have our little eyeglass and magnifying glass there we go okay so the magnifying glass is what we use in order to assign streaming volumes to maps so let's go over to our volumes let's go over to streaming volumes let's actually go ahead and we will delete this one and we will set it up from scratch so right now if we were to run this map and run through we are now currently in streaming volume one You'll notice when I leave streaming volume one, everything that was set to it disappears or appears when I go back into it. Now the problem is that's not what we want. We want it where when we leave streaming volume one, our other streaming volume is loaded and it keeps this map and this map, these two rooms loaded. So let's set that up. So we want a streaming volume. So under volumes, find our streaming volume right here, level streaming volume. We'll go ahead and drag it in. Let's go ahead and move this down to something more appropriately. And 
and I hate organizing these things. Okay, so we'll go like that. Actually, the easiest thing to do in my personal opinion is let's change this to our top perspective. And you can see our streaming volume right there. Let's go ahead and shut off the persistent level so we don't see the other streaming level. Well, actually, we have to keep it on, so I apologize. Let's turn on map three and four. Let's find our streaming volume right here. Let's name this. I'm going to go name the streaming volume. And then since this will contain rooms three and four, I'm going to call it three and four. That way, for consistency's sake, I know what it should have. The other one I've called streaming volume map one, two, three. Let's go ahead and rename that, make it easier. Map three, four. Streaming volume. There we go. So now, for consistency's sake, this streaming volume should display maps one, two, and three. This one should display three and four. So let's go ahead and take our streaming volume. Let's go ahead and set up our resize. We want it to encompass our room width and height wise. So let's go ahead and set this up, make it a little taller like that. And there we go. So now we have a streaming volume encompassing that. Let's go to the left side. Let's make sure the streaming volume is actually accessible by our player. We'll put it right there. And that's it. We should now have a second streaming volume set up and it covers our rooms three and four. So if we were to go ahead and run our map again, we will see that nothing has changed. While we have our stream volume, we haven't actually set it up. Well, let's go into our persistent level. Let's go into our level details. And let's go to our map 3 and map 4. Right now, map 3 is set to use streaming volume, streaming volume map 1, 2, 3. And then we'll go ahead and set it to use streaming volume map 3, 4. Map 4. Let's go ahead and delete this so we can show how to do it. Streaming volume, add, streaming volume, 3, 4. If we go over map 1, you'll notice it's set to streaming volume map 1, 2, 3. Map 2, streaming volume map 1, 2, 3. Map 3, streaming volume map 1, 2, 3, and streaming volume map 3, 4. And map 4, streaming volume map 3, 4. So, if we run this example again, we'll go through it. And this time you'll notice that room stays. If we go ahead and break out and eject, well, rooms one and two are now hidden because we are now currently in the streaming volume for maps three and four. You can't really see it in here, but you can kind of see the bounding box right there. So that is how streaming volumes work. Streaming volumes encompass the entire area where you want to show something. So if you have a very, very large map, or things that are separating the rooms like this, use your streaming volume, plop it down. It doesn't matter what size it is. It's intended to encompass the entire area that you want to use as a trigger. So if you have, for example, an outdoor area, and inside that outdoor area you have a few houses, and the entire outside area should be encumbered encompassed by an, a streaming volume that maybe will show the shell of those little houses. Now, let's make it when you get closer to it, you set up another streaming volume inside the houses. Once you go inside the houses, maybe you have it set up where the streaming volume outside disappears because you're no longer going to be in it. You're going to be in another streaming volume. Once you're inside this house, you can go ahead and just shut off the outside and as you transition back and forth, you will basically have a seamless transition without using resources. You could easily just simply add a door in here. That would be the smarter thing to do. That way when it comes to the area and you're transitioning to somewhere else, you're not actually going to see anything load. Blueprint nodes are a nice way of doing transitions from static places like room to room. And that is covered in a separate video. I have also created a complete project for the Epic Game Jam. Its code will be linked below. It includes streaming volumes and streaming blueprints and how to use them. And you can look over it for a complete example. If you have any other questions, please feel free to comment below.